Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So in case you totally missed it yesterday, Break induced a Korra related fandom heart attack. They revealed book four is going to premiere October 3rd. So I'll explain what's happening, when episodes are posting and how my videos are gonna work for it. It really is like one of the best things Nickelodeon could have done given all the craziness of this year. Okay, so first things first, here is the schedule. Book four, episode one will post October 3rd to all digital platforms that book three was on. That includes Nick.com, Amazon, Google Play Store, etc. For some reason, it's not been on iTunes, probably because Apple isn't paying Nickelodeon enough per episode. They also announced book four is titled Balance. There isn't a whole lot we know about what the story is. There are a few minor things that have been confirmed, like the title of the very last episode. So if you don't want to know what that is, just turn the volume down till you see this little spoiler tag go away. I'll wait just a sec. Okay, ready? Here we go. The very last episode of Korra is called Avatar Korra. It's very simple, just Avatar Korra. Okay, so spoilers over, moving on with the schedule. They haven't announced whether or not they're gonna do a double episode premiere like book three, or they're just gonna air episodes one week at a time. It'll affect when the final episode is, and I would plan on them airing the first two episodes back to back, or when I say air, I mean post, because it's gonna be digital. If you remember, they usually made episodes available on nick.com between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. Pacific time. So just adjust based on whichever international country you're in. I know some people outside of the United States had some issues accessing nick.com, but usually there's some sort of alternative for you guys. So hopefully by the time book three gets here, everyone will know how to get the episodes. I just please ask that you don't post any, you know, external streaming links. You can tell people about anything you want to tell them about, just as long as you don't post the hyperlink. I know that sounds weird, but it's just a copyright issue with YouTube. I'll continue to post updates about the schedule as we learn it. It's possible they might take a break for some of the U.S. holidays, or they could just air them one at a time. A lot of U.S. shows just take holiday breaks, just depending on where they fall in the year. So it's possible there could be like a week when there's no episode. But I would generally plan on a double episode premiere and a double episode finale. In general, I would expect that all the episodes will finish airing by the end of the year. It's possible they could roll over a little, but I think that they'll want to get them all out before the end of the year. I know a lot of you have also asked about how this is going to affect my schedule because I posted that big channel trailer and Cora wasn't a part of it. So obviously I'll be adding Cora to my weekly video list. So this is basically what Fridays are going to look like on my channel. Obviously Constantine is going to be my new, you know, DC Comics Friday night TV show. Since Cora episodes typically post online between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. Pacific time, I'll have plenty of time to get those videos out before Constantine starts because that show isn't until like 10 p.m. So the videos I'll be doing will look just like the stuff I did for book two and book three. You know, be sure to subscribe to get it if you're finding me for the first time. I'll also be doing the weekly Cora giveaway, so it'll be a lot of fun. Hat tip to all you guys who are starting a new semester at school. I know it makes it a little more difficult for you to get work done on Fridays, but hey, you know, how many people do homework on Friday nights? To be honest, whenever I was still in college, I did do a little bit of work on Friday nights, so I feel you guys. I know the big conversation right now, though, is turning to the fact that this is really the beginning of the end. But what's probably going to happen as we near the end of book four is I'm just going to let everyone vote on a new anime series that we can all watch together. You know, silver lining in things going away is that it always allows you time to find something new to fall in love with. You know, so don't cry yet. There'll be plenty of that happening during the premiere. I'm actually kind of happy going to the new episodes, not knowing a lot about them. There's always a lot of pressure whenever episodes leak to watch them ahead of time, which kind of lessens the enjoyment just a little bit. There's something to be said about like the mutual anticipation that a fandom has when they're waiting for something together. Whenever something leaks, it always goes totally crazy. We did see that Kuvira teaser, but so far all we know is that she might be one of the antagonists. We don't know that she's going to be the main villain, and we don't know who else is coming back. Let's think about what the title balance says about what the story might be. I mean, it's all about brokering peace or brokering an arrangement between all parties involved, between the spirit realm and between the political powers. At the end of book three, the spirits were still popping up everywhere, taking over certain parts of cities, and the governments were being thrown into chaos. I know the characters were mostly localized to the Earth Kingdom, but I feel like it was implied that Zaheer's chaos would start spreading to the surrounding area. And just to put this out there, I don't think we're going to have like a downer 70s ending to the series. For any of you that don't know, a downer 70s ending is like Logan's run, you know, where the movie ends and it's really depressing and not hopeful at all. I don't think that's how Korra's going to end. I think we'll end on a positive note. It just implies there's a lot of hope that Korra is going to find a way to broker an arrangement between the spirit realm and the physical realm and broker an arrangement between the political powers in the world. The other really big question is who's coming back? I know we all want to see Toph and Azula and the rest of the last airbender characters come back or the surviving ones. 
The only confirmation I've found in terms of returning actors that we haven't seen in a while was from Daniel Day Kim, the actor that plays Asami's father. For those that don't know, he's Hiroshi Sato. We haven't seen him since book one. During last year, he did say he was coming back, but since we didn't see him in book three, obviously that meant book four. If you remember, the same kind of thing happened with Great Delisle, where it was like, oh, you know, she's coming back, she's gonna be playing a villain, an evil female waterbender villain, but when we didn't see anything in book two, obviously it meant book three. So they're just so far ahead. Animation is done way after they do voice work. Just to give you an example, they were doing book four voiceover work while book two was still finishing its run on TV. That's how far ahead they are. So as of right now, they are headed to New York Comic Con. That's October 9th to the 12th. They will be doing a panel, so you should be able to ask them some questions if you're going. I would recommend that you do. That doesn't mean that they'll never go to Comic Cons and do panels again, but future ones will probably just look like the fan-organized Last Airbender panels. Usually fans are responsible for putting those together. So for any of you that do have an interest in doing that, you know, Mike and Brian will probably continue to go to conventions, just not in an official capacity. There's no word on what they're bringing to that Comic Con panel, the New York Comic Con panel but they're pretty good about bringing footage from future episodes, so they'll probably at least show a clip. They might even screen a future episode because book four will have already aired two or three episodes by the time Comic-Con rolls around. For anyone that is going to New York Comic-Con and wants to ask them a question, I just caution you against asking them about future Avatar series. They've already said they're not doing a future Avatar series after Korra, so it's kind of a waste of a question. I would ask them more about, are they going to continue the comics? You know, is Nickelodeon intending to continue the story in other forms of media? Most notably the comics. The comics is really just the first place I would look. They've already paid a ton of money for the rights to Korra and to produce all these episodes. They're probably not just going to drop it cold turkey, so I would expect that they will continue the comics. Hopefully they'll make some sort of announcement. I'm also really hoping that someone, I'm pointing to all you guys out there, ask them what their next project is, break that is, or if they're not ready to announce it yet, and they probably aren't, you know, when do they expect to make an announcement? Nickelodeon might choose to develop more adult themed content for digital platforms. So Mike and Brian might choose to develop a series in that vein. They never said necessarily that they'd never work with Nickelodeon again, even given all the craziness with Legend of Korra. So it's totally possible that they could develop a new adult themed animated show for digital platform. That doesn't mean that it would be another Avatar series though. I do expect them to continue to produce animation. Bright did say that they had a bunch of ideas that they just didn't end up pitching a long time ago that they still want to pitch. So those projects might be what happens next, but they didn't really say what they were. I will continue to follow their career, but like I said, as Korra Book 4 starts to close down, I'll just ask all you guys to vote on a new anime series for me to do videos for. Just something fun that we can all enjoy together. I'll say the worst part of a fandom is waiting, you know, the not knowing part. Waiting for the second part of a two-part episode. Waiting for the next series to start, you know, not knowing what's coming next. I guess you could say waiting in lines at Comic-Con is a huge bummer too. But as you guys think of potential future anime series to suggest to me, you know, I just ask that they be something that everyone in the world has access to and that are generally pretty cheap to find. So, you know, they either have to be able to stream it or find it on TV. Generally, I try to avoid doing videos for things that only a small group of people can watch. It just makes it a lot less fun. And since the Korra Book 3 premiere is within like the next three weeks, I'm going to just continue to do regular bonus videos on a weekly basis on Fridays because that's when new episodes are going to post. I'm slowly getting into my fall schedule. If you haven't seen it, I posted a video you can find right here where I talk about all the new TV shows and movies and stuff that I'm going to be doing videos for. Obviously, Korra is not on that list because they hadn't made the announcement when I made the video. But you can also click here to see my Book 4 predictions. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.